Hello and thanks for tuning in to another Infinite Flight tutorial. In this video, I'll show you how to climb to cruise in an airliner. We're lining up and preparing for takeoff at San Francisco International. Before we go, let's quickly talk through the first few moments of a typical airliner takeoff. The first thing to note is that takeoffs in an airliner rarely require 100% throttle. Using a reduced thrust takeoff, our takeoff power will be 91% in one. At 145 knots, or VR, we'll begin to rotate and gradually pitch up to 15 degrees. Once stable at 15 degrees, we then begin adjusting our pitch to maintain V2 plus 10 to 20 knots. If V2 is 145 knots, then we are pitching as needed to maintain anywhere from 155 to 165 knots. At 1,000 feet above the airport's elevation, we lower the nose to 10 degrees and reduce our climb power to 87% N1 as we begin accelerating and retracting flaps. I'll show you the numbers for today's performance data on the right side of your screen and also leave a few resources to calculate V speeds and power settings in the description below. We're clear for takeoff and ready to begin. With the brakes held, I slowly increase to 50% N1. This is a good time for a final check that both engines are operating normally, flaps are set, and you're properly configured. Releasing the brakes, I slowly increase to takeoff power of 85% throttle, which results in 91% N1. At 145 knots, I begin slowly pulling back until airborne, holding that back pressure as we gradually pitch for 15 degrees and our initial climb speed of 155 to 165 knots. I've switched over to departure and requested flight following to JFK so that we can begin to follow our flight plan. As this is happening, we've also reached 1,000 feet above the airport so we can lower our nose to 10 degrees, reduce throttle to 80% or 87% in one, and begin accelerating towards 250 knots. Passing 190 knots, I will retract my flaps to zero and begin to maintain that 10 degree pitch. While all of these things were happening, we were also given an altitude restriction of 7,000 feet. I've set this on my autopilot and will reduce my rate of climb once we have 1,000 feet to go. This helps give us a more smooth and shallow level off. Shortly after leveling off, I am told that altitude is my discretion, so we continue the climb by setting our climb power to 87% N1 and pitching for 250 knots, which is the speed limit below 10,000 feet. This can be done manually or with the autopilot by adjusting your vertical speed. Now let's skip ahead to 10,000 feet, where we again lower the nose and accelerate, this time to 300 knots. Once at 300 knots, I adjust my rate of climb to maintain that speed. By now you likely see a common theme. With a constant climb power setting, we are relying entirely on pitch to maintain desired speeds. Doing this can result in reaching your cruising altitude in 15 to 30 minutes, but it's crucial to do so in an effort to lower your fuel burn, especially on those long hauls. Because of the many pilot inputs required, we do recommend that you always actively monitor your flight until reaching your cruising altitude. Now we look even further into our climb at two important moments. The first is passing 28,000 feet or flight level 280. You'll notice our indicated airspeed on the autopilot transitions to Mach speed. A typical cruising speed for the Airbus 320 is Mach 0.78 to 0.82. It's also normal to see your indicated airspeed decrease at these altitudes while your Mach speed goes up. Head over to our community forum for a great tutorial on the various types of airspeeds you may encounter. Finally, we'll talk about step climbing as we reach our cruising altitude of 33,000 feet. On longer flights, especially at heavier weights, it's important to choose a lower initial altitude. Staying at a lower altitude allows us to have a lower cruise power setting, thus resulting in a lower fuel burn. This is everything when stretching the range of your aircraft. We can see here that I have a very conservative cruise throttle at 80% N1. It's my goal to maintain that, and I'll wait a few hours into my 5 hour flight to climb to 35 and eventually 37,000 feet. Note that starting your flight too high and too fast can result in a stall. I hope this video helped you better understand how to climb to cruise in an airliner. While the performance data may vary, the fundamental procedures remain the same. A thorough takeoff brief is critical to help you nail this in a demanding live environment. Be sure you subscribe to the channel for more, follow Infinite Flight on social media, and of course head over to our community forum for many in-depth tutorials on the topics discussed in today's video. I'll see you next time.